Hey everyone, now we're going to put together everything we know about energy transfer all in one place. So here's the situation. We've got a freezer and we've got in it a container of water. And let's say that water, when we first put it in the freezer, is going to have a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. So as time goes on, what's going to happen is that the temperature of the water will drop until it hits the freezing point and then that temperature will stay the same for a little while and then the temperature will continue to drop until it gets to the same temperature as the freezer we'll say the freezer is negative 10 degrees celsius really cold and so once the ice reaches the same temperature as the freezer it's going to level off now notice there are different sections of this graph and i'm just going to number them so we got section 1, section 2, section 3, and section 4. Now for each one of those, we can actually draw a law diagram that's going to show us what's going on. And let's just go through and let's do that. So for situation 1, we draw our law diagram and we're interested in what's happening to the water and we're interested in thermal energy and oh, about had a brain freeze there how appropriate and our phase energy and it's got to be the same on both all right so here's what's happening our water has some amount of thermal energy i'll go with my standard three units and it's liquid so we're going to give it two units of phase energy. Now what's happening here is that the water is actually warmer than the freezer because remember when it starts, it's at 10 degrees Celsius. So what's going to happen is that energy actually leaves the water to go into the freezer. And so we show that the energy is leaving. And so now we have to determine where that energy is going. Well, since the water is not yet changing into ice, because it hasn't, at section one on the graph, it hasn't yet reached the freezing point. So it's not coming from the phase energy. The phase energy will stay the same. That energy has to come from a thermal energy then. So I'm going to reduce the amount of thermal energy down to 2. So we can see what happened. The water lost energy. It got colder, so that was a loss in energy from thermal energy. And our phase didn't change, so our phase energy will stay the same. Interesting. Now let's look at section 2 of the graph. And again, I'm going to make my wall chart and we're still interested in the same energies notice that this is good practice for making lots and lots of these wall charts uh, to get very good at them we're still interested in the water now notice this at section two it comes right at the end of section one so we know how the water is starting out it's going to start out just like we left it at the end of section one so it has two units of thermal energy, and it's a liquid. So we'll give it two units of phase energy as well. Now, it's still not as cold, even though the water's down to zero degrees now. The freezer is still colder, so we're still going to lose energy on this. And that energy is still going to the freezer, just like that. But now, notice if we look at our graph, the temperature at section 2 is not changing, which means the amount of thermal energy is not changing. So from this, since we've lost energy, and we know it didn't come from the thermal energy, the only place it can come from is the phase energy. So now our phase energy has been reduced from two blocks to one block, which shows that the water actually froze. 
because it changed phase. It went from a liquid to a solid. So we know that in part two of our graph, our water actually froze. So now let's look at part three. And again, it's a wall chart. You'd think I'd have gotten faster by now. But and we have water. And just before, uh, the situation we're left with is that at the end of two. So we've got two bars of thermal energy, but now one bar of phase energy because it's solid. It's ice now. But that ice is still warmer than the negative 10 degrees in the freezer. And so our water is still going to give off energy. And it's going to lose that energy to the freezer up until they reach the same temperature. All right, so now we have a solid chunk of ice. It's not losing any phase energy. At the end of this, it's still ice. So we've still got our one block of phase energy. But we lost energy. And it had to come from somewhere. The only place left is the thermal energy. And so we'll reduce it just like that. So now we've got section three. Now let's look at section four, which I'll squeeze in right at the bottom of this sheet of paper. Again, our thermal energy, our phase energy for both. And again, we're dealing with water. It's ice this time, but it's still made of the same particles. And we're left with the same situation as before. Only now, an interesting thing has happened. Notice I went ahead and filled those in. At section four, the temperature is not changing. That is, the ice has reached the same temperature as the freezer. So our thermal energy can't change. Thermal energy has to be one here, and it has to be one here. We started with ice, and we end with ice. So our phase energy cannot change either. So this means that there's no energy going in or out of the water. The water has reached what's called equilibrium with the freezer. So there's no transfer of energy in or out. So we don't have to draw any arrows coming in or out of our system. We simply know that this is showing that the water is now staying at the exact same energy. So in all of that, whew, lots of work there, we've seen that for this situation, water in the freezer, each part of this graph, each distinct region, can get its own lull chart, and we can see what's going on using those, as far as the energy is concerned, for each one of those regions. Um, so anytime you do these lull graphs, make sure you are doing them just like I showed you here. Include all the details. Can't leave anything out.